So hi everyone and welcome back to our channel and to today's video which is on the garden. If there's one thing I learnt from my parents, and there are many things, but the most important is whenever company comes you stop and have a cup of tea. So cheers. Living here as we do in central Alberta, our growing season is very short, about six months of the year at best, May through to November. By 1st of November the snow is usually flying and you're done. So it's important to make the best of what we have here. There is no finer place to live in the summer than Alberta. It is gorgeous, a beautiful, beautiful climate. Winter is hell. Even a goose with a brain the size of a postage stamp knows to get the heck out of Dodge and leave. Through the summer we try to make the best of what we have and for us the garden is perhaps the heart of what we do here. Sylv and I are well through our 50s, going to hit 60 next year. A few grey whiskers coming each year, getting a little thicker. We decided to go with raised bed gardens simply to make life a little easier, a little more comfortable, a little easier to work. And for us, we do not grow potatoes or anything of that nature. We live a very green diet. We've cut out a lot of things in life that we believe were doing us harm. So our garden grows mostly carrots, peas, beans, beets, um, onions, zucchini, broccoli, lettuce, and very seasonal, seasonal stuff. Now when we came to the 12 here, we realized that we were not the first ones to tend this land. There's been a homestead here for about 70 years. And even though the place was abandoned in the late 1970s, we realized that things that are done here, the windbreaks that are planted, the trees that have been planted, were all done for a reason. And there's a tremendous temptation when you move into a new place is to sweep clean. Let's get rid of everything that was there before. We don't need that. But when you live in it for a little while, you realize why things were done the way they were. And there is some logic and some thought to it. Most of what was done here is obviously for weather protection. And it works very, very well. And we would have been utter fools to demolish what had been done for generations prior to us. The underlying thing about the garden for us it is, is that it's such a calming place, such a, a comfortable sanctuary to go to. It's a beautiful, beautiful feeling to be out here, tending to what we grow. But above all else, the whole theme behind the 12 is to do it on a shoestring, to make it as affordable and easy to do as we can using as much recycled material as we can, avoiding running to the hardware store or the lumber yard. Try to do it on a shoestring. So let's go for a walk through the garden and we'll show you what we've done. When we started uncovering the garden, we followed the fence lines down through the Caraganas and this is where we found a break in the fence line. So we hacked our way through here and found that this was the original opening through into the garden. Over the years it's grown up into a beautiful arch. And that now is the entrance to our garden. One of the secrets of living as cheaply as you can is trying to make use of something that others have thrown away or do not consider to have any value. Now this is what we call the greenhouse because it's green and it was at a, an industrial sale. I think it was 200 bucks I paid for it. And then we had to move it. It went onto our car trailer without any issue. We got our home and it served us very, very well as a tool shed, keep the lawnmower, rotavator, anything we need under cover. 
Being a very old farmstead, this used to be the garden uh, in decades gone by and people did plant trees out here for shade. Some of them are now old and very decrepit and there's always that desire to clean up and to try and make everything look tidy. Well, a lot of these trees serve a purpose that they could not have served before in that they are bare now. So these bare limbs now serve to support the birds. And this is where, I don't know if you can see them up there, the swallows are now gathering, getting ready to head south for the winter. We also have hawks, owls, all kinds of wildlife come and sit on these bare limbs and live their lives alongside us. How wonderful. When we started into this idea of raised beds, we wanted to build them as cheaply as we could to be affordable and using recycled materials. What we got was some a rough sawn 2x6s, you could use 2x10s, whatever you can find, old scaffold planks, anything you can find as long as it is not toxic. You do not want to use anything that's treated with pressure treated um, preservative or anything that is painted with what could be a lead based paint, although many years have passed since they were ever used. So what we did was use rough sawn 2x6s we used some scrap 2x4 lumber, sharpened them to a point, drove them in the ground. They're in about 8 inches, maybe a foot deep. Then drop our boards in behind and nail them back to the 2x4s. They're supported. Then we line the inside with some basically vapor barrier, plastic vapor barrier sheeting. And the idea, the idea with that was to try to line the inside and stop the grass from working its way up through the bed and taking over. Quack grass and thistles will grow through this stuff and that has been an ongoing problem. The only upside is that with a raised bed it's much easier to weed your garden. In fact it's quite a joy, it's quite pleasant to come out here and scratch and pick out the weeds as they come up through. In the spring, you can start these beds a little earlier by putting a plastic tunnel over the top. And what we've seen people do is to use stuff like PVC electrical conduit that is quite flexible. You dig, push one end in the ground on one side, bend it over to make a hoop, push the other end in on the other side, and then cover it with clear PVC sheeting, tack it down to your sideboards, and you're in business. You've got a greenhouse. Where we are in this location, we're surrounded by water. Basically, we have water on three sides. So we just pump water up from the ponds and then run it down through sprinkler hoses or soaker hoses if you need it in the spring. You can easily do it with a watering can, which for the most part is what we do. We'll have a tank set up here, 200 gallons of water pumped up from the pond and just put the water on with a can as we need it. Very cheap. These have been up for three years now. We've had no problems. They work very well and we will build more of them. It's a joy to grow your garden this way. And when you come out here in the garden and you're doing this kind of work, you're in your own little sanctuary away from the rest of the world. And although we can hear the highway out there, it doesn't matter. This is our little piece of paradise done on a shoestring. When we first uh, built these beds, we uh, put in what we thought was some pretty good soil. In this particular area, it's a very nice black loam, very mellow, a nice soil. Uh, the first bed we built definitely has a better soil. This soil came from a little deeper. It was dug a little deeper. 
so it's not quite as good so each year after the crop is off we will dig in peat moss and coarse sand depending on how the soil has behaved through the summer uh, usually we're looking for something that's going to drain fairly well something that will not cap over in heavy rain and something that obviously yields well. The peat moss adds to the organic matter, keeps it mellow, and the sand aids to the drainage. So digging in those uh, additions each year leaves the soil mellow and ready to start each spring. Certainly this bed has improved immeasurably with the addition of those two items and we will certainly at the time we're thinking well we should dig this soil out but it has definitely improved over time and uh, we'll just keep working away at it a little while ago we uh, came across an advertisement on Kijiji for uh, another cook stove and uh, it turned out that it was an estate that was being cleaned up and dealt with by the family and uh, in addition to purchasing the cook stove we were able to get some trees and so to her credit Sylv has been nursing these young fir trees we've got spruce and blue spruce a few different varieties Probably about 50 seedlings in all is what we dug up. Some have survived, some have done very well, and others not so well. But it just goes to show that when you answer a simple ad on Kijiji for a cook stove, you never know where it can take you or the things it can yield. Just while I was uh, filming here in the garden, I'm just cleaning up and I look down and I see this little fella just working his little heart out on his way somewhere. What a beautiful caterpillar. Throughout the uh, winter months here in Alberta, we feed the birds. We feed them a tremendous amount and we have such a wonderful variety of birds that come and visit us. Quite a bit of what we feed is sunflower seeds. And in return, the birds will scatter those sunflower seeds around. And this year we found Quite a few little gifts for us left here in the garden by the birds. Sunflower seeds that they dropped as if to say thank you for feeding us and looking after us as you have. And you gotta think to yourself, well you know, what a wonderful gift from our little feathered friends just to say thanks very much. Sylvaner tree seedlings. Kind of little impromptu nursery that she started here. Some have done well, some not so good. But Sylv swears they all respond to talking. So she likes to talk to her trees. And there's nothing wrong with that. Each spring when we open up the garden and we start walking through, 
these branches are quite high and as the leaves come out the branches drop it is quite amazing how much weight leaves add to a tree so to help hold things up we've put a couple of wheel rims in here to hold up these big long saggy branches so that the arch stays high enough to walk through comfortably. Whilst growing a garden is a lot of work, a lot of effort, it does bring quite a few rewards and benefits. And perhaps the most simple and enjoyable is to just sit on the bench, take a look and enjoy.